Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you happen to be. This is your TI-30 XS MultiView demonstration on how to use the table feature for helping us out on, in this case, graphing or solving for zeros uh, in an equation. But you can use it whatever is going to help you out the most. So I have a function, f of x equals x to the third minus x squared minus 10x minus 8, and I'm trying to find the x-intercepts, the zeros, or the roots of that equation. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the table feature by clicking on table. And there's a function already in there I'm going to clear. And I'll get a y equals. The y equals is going to be where I put my equation. And I want to use x to the third, and then hit the right arrow so it comes down off of there, minus x to the second power minus 10x minus 8. There's my equation. Now, once I'm done with the equation, I'm going to hit enter because I'm, I'm in the table feature right now. When I hit enter, it's going to say start. Where do you want to start? And then it's got a step. I'm just going to let this one start. Uh, by knowledge of the Descartes, I'm going to start at negative 8, and I'm going to have it step at 1 because I know it's going to be one of these integers as it goes. And then I come down, it says auto. That auto is setting up. It's going to start at negative 8, then it's going to go negative 7, then it's going to go negative 6, and so on down the line. If I went to the ask feature, then I could type in. It's going to give me a, a place where I can type in whatever I want. So I hit auto, OK. It starts at negative 8. Negative 8 for that function evaluates to be negative 504. Negative 7 evaluates to that. I want you to notice that if I want to go up, I can still go up. It just starts at negative 8. I can go anywhere I want. And every time, it's going to step by 1. Look at that. I found my zeros. There's a 0 at negative 2 and a 0 at negative 1 and another zero at four. So if I was to use synthetic division, uh, theoretically a x um, minus four, and x, well, it looks like a uh, x plus one and an x plus two would divide out if I was to take that original function and divide. Now let's look at another uh, maybe more complex function uh, where isn't, it isn't going to fall on that integer value. So again, on the table feature, uh, this time what I'm going to work with is this other function over here of 3x to the fourth minus 11x to the third minus 3x squared minus 6x plus 8 equals 0. I'm trying to find the solutions to this equation. And it'd be really good if I could factor it, or I can find those, I can find those roots really uh, quite easily. I've already written a couple of the answers down because uh, I did the demo to, to myself first, so I know I'd be successful. On the table, this is my old uh, equation I had in there just a second ago. If I hit the clear button, I get a new place to type in my new function. I'll say 3x uh, to the fourth, and then right arrow out of that so I get off of that uh, exponent, minus 11x to the third, right arrow out of that, minus 3x to the second power, and then I've got minus 6x plus 8. Again, the equation was set up equal to 0, but if I think of it as a function, then I'll be able to find the zeros of that function, which would ultimately give me those roots. Uh, it says auto or ask. Now, I could use ask. Uh, if I think about this for a second, using Descartes' rule of, uh, well, Descartes and the PQ, I could look at the, the uh, rational zero theorem as being 8 and 3, all the factors of 8 and 3. So the worst case scenario is this could think should start at negative 8, and the other possible answers are going to be on the third. So I'm just going to go starting at negative 8. So I'm going to start on this one. I'm going to start at negative 8, and I'm going to go a step by a third. So and I, actually, I can actually make it be a third by just typing in a third. And I know that the zeros aren't going to fall exactly every third, but I know that they have chance that, that by the rational zero theorem, that's probably where one of them might be. So starting at negative 8, I can observe that I have a very high positive answer. So that's kind of an end behavior if you're uh, studying uh, college algebra. That x to the fourth is going to be rising or decreasing in, in theory. is going to be a decreasing function coming in from the left. And we see it decreasing um, down and down and down and down. And hopefully, it's coming down to some place where it's creeping up on the 0. And I'll scroll on down. It keeps getting closer. It's decreasing. It's a decreasing function, decreasing function. I feel like I'm getting 
and close. And there it is at two thirds. So notice that 0.6667 at two thirds is where one of those uh, roots exists. And then it starts climbing back up. So it turns into an increasing function, increasing function and still going up. And I believe at some point it's going to turn out, it's turning around. It's turned around and come back down. Now notice what happens here at four. Negative 6.9 times 10 to the negative 10th. This is a rounding error on our calculator. That 4 is actually one of those roots or uh, x-intercepts of a function uh, where the other one exists. And then at that negative, you'll see that it turns back around. or Actually, it still continues to increase um, on up to that positive value. So we find um, our zeros by doing it that way. Um, kind of a little bit of a cheat in some respects of using that step by 1 third and the rational zero theorem to make a be smart about it.